Baptist Church. My name is Mike Asher. I'm privileged to be the senior pastor here. We're so excited to have you with us. And this is Friend Day. Thank you, all of you friends who have befriended our family. And you're here today. And we look forward a little bit later uh, to be able to find out who is visiting with us this morning. The scripture teaches that a true friend helps others reach their highest potential for God. And there is no expression of friendship that's greater than helping others hear the word of God and come to know the Lord. And so good news, thank you for inviting your friends today. And again, friends, thank you for being our honored guests. We also want to welcome Dr. and Mrs. Ron Comfort, and I'll be uh, introducing them formally a little bit later, though for many of us, no introduction is needed. Uh, let me just mention our, uh, I want to express our love, condolences to Lonnie Edwards and his family. His sister, Joyce Newport, 69, uh, passed away with the Lord. Uh, she uh, passed away last week in Tennessee. The funeral was Friday, and Lonnie is back here this morning, got back yesterday. He's one of the doorkeepers in the house of the Lord. Amen. And, uh, Lonnie, we thank the Lord for you, and we are praying for you and your family. Congratulations to the Everts. Jason and Kristen celebrate 30 years tomorrow, and then Ray and Vicki Gore, 32 years on Saturday. And so, uh, congratulations uh, to all of you. As we study the scriptures, the Lord reminds us that Jesus is the friend of sinners. And for those that will admit their condition to him, repent, come to him, uh, we can become part of the family of God. And in fact, God wants to make us his friend. Jesus told his disciples, I don't call you servants, I call you friends. And I'm telling you all that the Father has shared with me. And so on this friend day, we want to remind you that the God that we're going to be worshiping this morning is not a despot with a big club. He is our loving Father in heaven. And if you don't know him as Savior, if you're away from him, uh, his spirit wants to work this morning in your heart to draw you back to himself. Uh, we're, our flesh is quick to blame God, but we need to remember that God so loved the world, he gave us his all. He gave us his son. And so let's exalt him in our hearts with our voices today, Pastor. We're going to start with a medley of songs on grace. If you don't need your hymn book, they'll be on the screen. Uh, there'll be a different time when they, the men will sing and women will sing. If you sing the wrong time, it's not a big deal. Just sing out with great fervor, with great intensity. The choir will start, and then I'll turn around and have you stand and sing the rest of the song with us.
after Walt Coles comes and goes. Let's bow our hearts and heads together. Our Father, we're so grateful to thee for the privilege that we have to gather in this place today to worship you. We ask that the Holy Spirit be our teacher today as Dr. Comfort comes to this pulpit and opens the Word of God. We pray that the Spirit of God will minister the Word to our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. And I pray, God, that our our minds will be receptive, our hearts will be responsive, and our lives will be reflective of your word. I pray, God, that we might see a demonstration of your mighty power here in our presence today. Amen. God, thank you for all these friends who have come. Amen. We're grateful, Lord, for the admonition that the word of God gives to us that if a man is to have friends, he must show himself friendly. God, we're grateful today for the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. The Lord Jesus Christ, who came from heaven to earth to become like us in order to die for us, that we might be redeemed and be brought into your family. And God, I pray today that if there's one here or more, many here today, Lord, who have never opened their hearts and their lives to receive Christ as their Savior, that this would be the day, the day of salvation for them. May the Spirit of God work in each of our hearts today, we pray in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Amen.
We'll say the reference, the verse, and then close with the reference. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13, 5. And before you're seated, I want to say the next verse. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. We thank God for his promises and his word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Again, hope you're committing that passage to memory. Uh, in the fight for the Lord and truth, uh, we need that reminder because we also uh, wrestle against our flesh every week. And God reminds us our lifestyle needs to be without covetousness. God's been so good to us. Amen. Satan can distract us with what we think we don't have and that we need. And so we need to just rest in God's goodness. Uh, amen. Well, again, good morning. We welcome you. We welcome those joining us on live stream. Uh, so thankful for our live stream audience each week. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me welcome those who are over in our flo overflow area in the Fellowship Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, church family that are over there, you made room this morning so all our guests could be in here. Thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, you're a blessing, and I know God's going to speak to your hearts uh, over there as well. I do want to welcome back this morning Winston Lowry. It's good to mm -hmm. see him back uh, out of the hospital, home, and recovering. And uh, what a blessing. Church family, I want to give you an opportunity. We're going to take time uh, for you to introduce the guests that are with you today. Uh, now, if you got an invite, you're here, but... Uh, you don't remember who invited you. Thank you for being here. All right, you are <laughs> significant to us. Oh uh, man, we, we're grateful you're here. But we want to give our church family an opportunity uh, to recognize who is visiting with them. I want to start by introducing uh, my dear friends Terry and Hannah Myers, who are right over here. Terry's a retired uh, Chesapeake police officer, uh, a brother in Christ. They know the Lord and, and are such an encouragement to us. But uh, we're blessed to have uh, them here this morning. So if you have a guest with you, church family, your guest doesn't need to stand, all right? But if you would stand, and let's just go around quickly and find out who is visiting with you today. All right, give everybody a chance to stand. All right, Grace, we're going to start with you this morning. Good morning, I'd like to introduce my friend Chloe from work. So all right. I'm glad she's with us now. All right, Chloe, welcome. Welcome. So good to have you. We have our sweet friends and returning visitors, Donnie and Glenda Holcomb here. Amen. Donnie, Glenda, good to see you guys. You, you've been a blessing to the Wagars, and we're thankful you're back today. Amen. I have my adopted daughter, Victoria the Shakira Roberts, U.S. Navy. Okay. Well, and thank you for your service. So good to have you here. Thank you. I have the church family with me today, Ashley and Matt, and their girls, Elsie and Oliver, back in children. Okay, all right. I, in fact, I'm going to just have you wave at me. Uh, there you go. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here uh, as well. All right, let's start over here. All right. You were his Sunday school teacher. God used you, brother. God used you. Thank God for Sunday school teachers. Amen. Yes. All right, ready? Good to see you. I got to meet her before the service. She's so excited we're talking about her right now. <laughs> Thank you for being here this morning. Mrs. Coles. Sue Gertoler from Niceville, Florida. Amen. Amen. Wow. Good to see you. Years and years as a member here and a blessing. And we're Amen. Back today. Brother Davis. Uh, father and mother-in-law, Randy Tracy Conn from Delta, Missouri. Okay. Wow. Now, in the past, he's introduced them as his favorite in-laws. <laughs> he didn't do that this morning. Okay, back there. <laughs> I know the status hasn't changed. Yeah. Uh, Very good. Brother Larry. Uh, 
uh, a good friend of ours and a brother of the board beside me right here, Steve Benton, and uh, two friends in the center section here, uh, Bobby and Missy Ward, and they brought friends, Larry and Lenny. Wonderful. Thanks for being here, all of you. My friend Josh, his wife Sarah, and uh, Mary and Ray Hudson. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good to see all of you here this morning. Very good. I'm going to come right back up here to the front then. Mark? Yes, my friend Gerald Bermadio and uh, my friend James Cushing. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for being here today. My friend Speedy and Lee. Wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for being a part of our service. Harley's. That's my friend, Danny Baker. Okay. All right. Danny, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, Diane. Okay. Pickleball All right. All right. We have a pickleball ministry in our church. <laughs> <laughs> Though some of us, including this preacher, could probably use the exercise. Just saying. All right. Nancy Derby. All right, Nancy, mm -hmm. thank you for being part of our service as well. Amen. Yes? My sister in law, Olka, my god kids, Hannah and Cameron, and their dear mom and friend, Melissa Peters. All right, thank you all for being here this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is my friend and granddaughter, and EJ's mom, and they live here in Chesapeake, and she's here yes. Thursday. Yes, welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. So good to see you right behind you. Yes. Miss Andrea. Oh, okay. This is Olivia Davis from Bethel Christian School. Okay. okay. Let's welcome. Elva, no, I didn't mean to skip you. Huh? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs>
uh, just share a couple uh, quick reminders for our church family, and then he's going to, to speak again. So uh, if you could just be thinking, if you need to be on your way, we understand. But if you could stay for the next hour, that would be a wonderful blessing to us. If you are a first-time guest this morning, would you slip your hand up? Just hold it up. All right, hold it up high. And uh, ushers, you do what you do so well, okay? As they're handing out those materials, let me introduce our guests this morning, Dr. and Mrs. Ron Comfort. Uh, Dr. Comfort uh, will have been in evangelism this May 62 years. Now, I know he doesn't look anywhere near as that old, all right? But I will tell you this, that as a child, this man ministered to me in our home church. I remember... Uh, his, his preaching, part of the reason I remember his preaching and their music was my folks, who were new Christians, bought their LPs. All right, you young people later ask your parents, what is that, okay? Uh, bought, bought their records, and as kids, we would play listening to their music and his sermons. And, uh, and I'll never forget that, how God used that in our hearts. Um, I really should probably have uh, Pastor Coles introduce uh, Brother Ron because they knew each other back at, uh, in Bible college. They were close. In fact, they looked close enough alike that people would get them mixed up. Yep. Uh, but they have been a dear friend of this ministry. If you were here for our 50th anniversary celebration last April, you know that Dr. Comfort uh, preached that day. And as we're coming now to the end of our 50th year in April, we'll start celebrating 51 years. It is such an encouragement to be able to have them with us as we close out this 50th year. And uh, the Lord has been in that. The Lord has been working in that. And uh, so he is going to open the word of God to us today. Uh, but you and I also need to be partaking of spiritual food. And part of that, we're blessed in this day to have a lot of excellent reading material. Dr. Comfort is also an author. And I've asked him to come and to share with you some of the materials, the books that he's written and that he's brought with him that are available in the foyer. Dr. Comfort, welcome. This is Comfort. Thank you, Pastor. What church was it that you heard? Memorial Baptist Rockford. Okay, wow. And how old are you? <laughs> 58. Wow, that makes me a Methuselah. <laughs> you know, when we were here for meetings several years ago, Brother Coles got up and he said that we were mistaken for each other. We both had... Uh, flat top haircuts in those days and uh, so he alluded to the fact that our hair is different today his is white and mine is darker and so I told the crowd I said now the last night I'm going to encourage your pastor and let him know why my hair is so dark and his is so white so the last night I got up with a can of shoe polish. <laughs> and I said, Pastor, if you'll apply this, you'll have hair like mine. <laughs> yeah, I think, Brother Asher, that we probably held the first revival meeting after this church started. So we have had a wonderful relationship through the years. Mm -hmm. And Brother Coles was on our faculty or on our board at Ambassador Baptist College for years and years. And every year since then, when we have a summer deficit, uh, this church has sent a thousand dollars. So I hope you'll keep that up, Pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, let me introduce my wife, Joyce. Honey, would you stand, please? This August, she and I will have been hanging out together for 60 years. 
Now she wants you to know that she's eight years younger than I. <laughs> but the Bible says train up a child. <laughs> so it's work, folks. It really is. Three of the books I've written are available on the table on my left as you go out into the vestibule. Here's my autobiography, and I'll be giving part of my life story this morning. Born in a Roman Catholic home from the age of 7 to 15, sang in the nightclub stage, radio, and TV, and we'll be talking a little more about that. And then here's a book on prophecy, 11 chapters dealing with prophetic themes. The last chapter's on heaven. It's worth the price of the book. I had a booklet on heaven about 45, 50 pages about 40 years ago. And a lady from California wrote me and she said, Brother Comfort, I was experiencing a life-threatening operation and the night before the operation, somebody gave me your book on heaven. She said, I read it through before the operation and I was somewhat disappointed that I survived the operation. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, is... Um, uh, my book on prophecy. And then here's a book your children and your grandchildren ought to read. Fourth grade on up, the four crises of youth, four questions every young person has to answer, which will determine the rest of his life. Also, we have a flash drive. We're no longer carrying uh, CDs, but uh, on that flash drive, 33 of the most requested messages that I preach are available. Let me say that if you get all three books, we knock $5 off the price, and I'll give you my life story on, on CD that was dramatized and unshackled. But above all, go by and pick up a prayer card, which will give you our itinerary. Amen. That table is over on this side of the foyer. If you head down that hallway before you get to the doors, uh, right there, uh, there's a table and those materials there. Mrs. Comfort will be there to help you. Just as a reminder to our men, this Saturday morning is our men's prayer breakfast. Ushers, please come. <coughs> we are going to be, of course, giving a good love offering to the comforts today for being a blessing. If you'd like to contribute to that, uh, we want to encourage you to designate uh, in the offering. Also, please keep this in mind, there is not an evening service. We have been uh, letting our church family know, invite guests, and then have them over this afternoon. If, if you can, take them out for lunch, and then we're giving you some extra time so that you can uh, spend longer at a restaurant, get together at your home, and fellowship. All right, and so uh, just also keep in mind that uh, we uh, do not have our uh, evening service. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you that you are the friend of sinners, that you so loved the world you gave us the Lord Jesus. He didn't come to save his friends. Lord, you came to save your enemies and to make us your and Lord, we marvel at that because we know, according to Scripture, what we deserve. But thank you for great grace. We've been singing about that today. And Lord, again, we just want to thank you for every guest, every friend of our family here who are visiting today. Would you work in our hearts, have your way. Lord, as we do each Lord's Day, we want to remember a sister church. We pray for Temple Baptist in Chesapeake this morning, Pastor Watson Morgan. Bless them, strengthen that flock, unify them. Lord, would you use them to be a bright testimony for you. Uh, Lord, save souls over there. Uh, strengthen them spiritually. Thank you for the Hispanic ministry. Today we pray for Pastor Tobin, Mrs. Tobin. Help her as she recovers from uh, surgery. Uh, knee replacement. But Lord, would you just work in Hispanic souls uh, today? Thank you for that ministry. 
Lord, we do again want to pray for Lonnie Edwards and his family with his sister's homegoings. Thank you that she uh, had a wonderful testimony and is in heaven with you. Uh, God, would you just bring comfort to that family. Lord, for any of our preachers that are away today, uh, our missionaries uh, sent out of this church that are uh, sharing ministry and preaching, we pray for your blessing on them. Uh, including Brother Mike Blackburn, who's in two churches today in North Carolina. Uh, Lord, please use him there. Lord, today we pray for Nikki Brown. Uh, Lord, who just came down with Dengue fever yet again. We mm. pray that you would uh, break that fever, heal her, Lord. Uh, she is really suffering right now. Uh, would you uh, restore her to health? Uh, Lord, would you also give stamina to Matt as he seeks to minister in that new church plan, care for his family, and especially care for his dear wife. Lord, thank you that Kendall Long is recovering from uh, having kidney stones removed this past week. Lord, she's been hurting. Would you strengthen her? Raise her up. Uh, and Lord, give strength to her family as they care for her. Lord, uh, please uh, give her grace and, and healing at this time. Lord, for the Foltzes, we pray that you would heal all of those who are injured in that severe uh, car accident. Uh, Lord, thank you for sparing lives. Thank you that Mary came home this week. But would you uh, help them all to recover fully uh, from this? And then uh, those who are battling cancer, those who are in the hospital or just gotten out, we think of Martha Gazera today. Uh, Lord, strengthen her lungs, strengthen her heart. Lord, help her to be able to get back home. Now, Lord, bless the preaching of your word today. Empower uh, uh, Brother Ron as he opens the word to us. And uh, Lord, cause your word to run, to find good ground, and to accomplish what you desire. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn your hymn books to 639. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Remain seated. First verse
outstanding by that gentleman there. Uh -huh. I'm preaching this morning about a short man, a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Take your Bible and turn, please, to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Let's stand, please, for the reading of God's Word. I believe, Brother Asher, this is... There are more visitors here this morning than any church that we have preached in since COVID. Wow. You should be committed for bringing out your friends this week. All right, Luke chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. It says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank you very much. You may be seated. <clears throat> 